when you talk about consciousness, any scientific theory of consciousness has to be able to do this. It has to reconcile the third person perspective of science with our immediate um, first person experience of the world. It has to come together. So how would you do this? I think a good starting point is to go consider situations where your first person perspective and your third person perspective are correlated. And there, it seems to me that whenever I engage in behaviors that are conducive to my well-being, Antonio's language, conducive to my homeostasis, they tend to feel pleasant, and those that threaten my homeostasis tend to feel unpleasant. If I hold my hand over a candle, that's ouchy. If I have nutritious food or I have a warm shower or I take a nap in cuddly blankets, that feels pleasant. So there's a correlation there between the first person and third person perspective. And that's something we should try to explain. How can we explain it? So now I'm fully aware whenever you enter the question of consciousness, you are likely to make a fool of yourself because this has happened to many deep, deeper thinkers before. So how could we explain this? I would like to try an explanation. Being a scientist, you want to take a materialist, physicalist um, approach to explaining this. And when you say you take a materialist approach, that essentially says you assume that there is what it's called the physical correlate of consciousness. There's some state of matter or some evolution of state of matter that corresponds to your conscious experience. And that, I should not say this just yet, um, but maybe here's an angle where you see uh, quantum computers are coming in. Quantum computers, besides being marvelous machines that will compute certain things extraordinarily faster, they are also programmable physics experiments with which we can probe the fabric of reality on a much more fundamental level. So if we say we want to understand what is the physical correlate of consciousness, then with a quantum computer as a tool, you have ability to simulate states of matter in a much more fundamental way. Okay, so within a physicalist approach, how can we try to explain this correlation between feels good and it's conducive to my homeostasis? I could think of, of two explanation pathways. Um, one would be called psychophysical parallelism. It's actually an old idea from Leibniz, Malbranche, Spinoza. Essentially, it is you, you have a physics description of, of a system and then certain aspects of it you would declare um, are correlated with the perspective of the system itself. So for example, in, in physics, we often talk about a system tries to go to a stable state. And we could say, oh, whenever this happens, that feels pleasant. And if the system becomes unstable, that's coinciding with trepidation. Uh, you could think of, let's say, you see a ball rolling downhill and you, it takes a certain trajectory. If um, a physicist would say, why the ball takes this trajectory? A physicist would say, yeah, it took the uh, path of the least action. It's um, just the uh, forces um, drive it down there. But psychophysical parallelism essentially would say, if you could interview the ball or interrogate its first person perspective, then the ball might say, no, hey, I did this, that was fun. So this, so this brings us to perspectives in correspondence, and that, of course, could explain why is it that we feel good. So that's explanation one of psychophysical parallelism. The second route would appeal to free will, because if um, free will were to exist, and I understand that's a loaded term, but if it were to exist, then presumably the system could use it to assume a more preferable, pleasant state. And then all evolution would have to do is to associate behaviors that are good for the survival of the organism with these pleasant states. And then, again, these two things come together. So these are two explanation pathways um, for this uh, correlation. 